Hey guys, we've got a Harley Davidson clutch basket in the shop here that has got a broken bolt down inside there that I need to see if I can remove. This belongs to one of my viewers. His name is Jack McDonald. He reached out to me and asked me if this was something that I would be willing to help him out with. So I said, send it on down here and we will see what we can do. So it is still mounted to the uh, sprocket assembly right here. You know, we got the bearing right there, a snap ring. Uh, instead of trying to press this out, I'm hoping that this is gonna be a relatively simple job of getting this bolt out of there. Now, and when you say that, that doesn't always happen, right? But we're gonna try to anyway. So I'm gonna set this up in the mill. I've got a uh, three jaw chuck that I can mount down to the table. And I believe what we can do is this area right here, you got a spline shaft that goes through the center. So you have this hub that we can chuck on with the three jaw chuck and that should hold it nice and firm. I can even put a couple of uh, machinist jacks out here on the side just to kind of give it some support. And then uh, center up on the, the hole right here, there's actually a counterboard in there so we should, use, we should be able to use our indicator and center up on that guy and then get in there and uh, attempt to remove it. I am gonna try to use the left-handed drill technique to, uh, to get it out. And I have no idea if the bolt was originally Loctited whenever it was put in there, but uh, this is one of the bolts that was in there. I, I didn't see any Loctite, but he could have cleaned that off there. I'm not sure. But what I'm hoping has happened is that maybe the, the bolt just yielded after being torqued in there. Maybe it just broke off, you know, got weak and broke off. Uh, a lot of those cases like that, the threads that's remaining down in the hole isn't under tension unless it's bottomed out on the bottom of the threads. Uh, in some of those cases like that, it's actually fairly loose in there. You just got to be able to grab onto it with like a drill bit or an easy out, something like that, and be able to spin it backwards and come up on out of the hole. So that's what we're going to attempt anyway, and hopefully that's going to work out. If it, for some reason, doesn't want to back out on me, then uh, we can certainly go through there and drill it and uh, run the tap down there and uh, clean it up. I think I mentioned this is a uh, an M6 by one. I went ahead and uh, verified that, got a tap, and uh, just run it down in there on the existing threads just to clean those up as well so that we can have um, maximum opportunity for that rest of that bolt to just back up and out of there. So we'll go to the mill, start getting this guy set up and see if we can get her done. So this is the three jaw chuck that I was talking about earlier that we're gonna to use to hold this. So this is a, a low profile chuck designed to be mounted down to any kind of machine table where you can utilize a self-centering chuck to hold something, either vertically or maybe you got something in this case, we're gonna be holding onto the hub where it's a little more difficult to pull it down to the table using strap clamps there. So let's go ahead and get it on there. We've already got it bolted in nice and rigid. All right, and then there's the Here's the hub that I was showing you earlier that we're gonna be chucking on right there. I went ahead and put just a red dot with a paint marker on which one that, I, and, and that I'm gonna be working on. I think I'm gonna bring it out to the, to the outer side like that. And we'll go ahead and snug up our three jaw. Now this, this is gonna move, but the center right there has got it nice and tight, so. That should be good to go. I don't even know if we're gonna need to put any support out there, but we certainly can if we need to put some machinist jacks in here. So I've got a couple of left-handed drill bits right here that we can use. I'm probably just gonna go with this guy. So this is a 3 16 This is gonna put me closest to that uh, tap drill size of five millimeter uh, without going over. I do have a 4.2 millimeter left-handed drill, a little bit smaller, so that's why I'm gonna go with the 3 16 So I was gonna show you, this is a, this is one set of left-handed drills I have. It's not a complete set. They just have some of the basic sizes in there and that uh, seems to work pretty good. I'm gonna look, I actually wanna add this to uh, my inventory here and see if I can find a full set from 1 16th up to half in 64th increments. I've also got, this is my metric uh, drill set that I go to and use when needed. And we do have a five millimeter drill bit. So this, this goes from one to 12 in uh, half millimeter increments. And so what I'm gonna do with the half inch, I'm sorry, the uh, <laughs> half inch, 
five millimeter drill is once we get centered up on that hole, I'm gonna go down in there with this five millimeter drill. You see it fits the hole really nicely. All I'm doing with this is gonna try to uh, very gently machine the top of that broken screw with a center, you know, a divot in there made by this drill. And since that's right up on the, the, the thread wall, that should help keep it centered there as well. So once we get it divoted with this, we'll go in there with our 3 16 left-hand drill bit and attempt to unscrew this broken screw up out of the hole. Just using a 60 degree center pointer there to get the hole roughed in very closely. And then we'll stick an indicator in there and uh, line up on the hole. This will get you really close right there. We're just about on it right there. This is the indicator that we'll use to uh, get it indicated. It's an inner rapid. Just get it down there close. Let's see if I can get that a little bit easier to turn. There we go. Yeah, just get it down there close and then you can do some fine tuning on it like that. Okay, probably blow it out on the video there. Just trying to get it even on the indicator. I don't really care where that number's at. Just trying to get it within a couple thousandths there. So it looks like we're at 11, 11, go side to side. That looks like 11 and 11 right there. That's center. We'll go ahead and zero our digital readout. So we got a reference on center point and then lock the table. I decided to go ahead and add the machinist jack. So I've got two in the front and I've got two in the back there as well. These are the uh, Sterrett Little Giant machinist jacks. And I don't have them very tight, I'll show you. See, I just got them finger tight. And all it is is just to give some solid support between this gear and the, you know, the machine face down here and uh, prevent any you know, downward forces from trying to push this down. It also is keeping it from trying to spin on me while I'm over here working on it. So I think that's gonna work out good there. I'm gonna start with our five millimeter drill. Just wanna try to spot it is all. Now the other thing that I'm concerned about is if that screw is loose, which is gonna be a good thing, is that as soon as I touch it with this drill bit, it's gonna try to screw it down a little bit. So I'm gonna come down, matter of fact, I'm gonna come down and touch it right there. And we'll go ahead and start the machine up just above it so I don't come down and hit it hard. I'm just gonna, I don't normally like to cut, to let cutting tools rub, but in this case, I want to very gently try to get that center or the drill to cut in the center. I can see it trying to walk just a little bit. All right, I can feel I've made a little bit of progress there. Yeah, you can see some chips coming out. All right, so let's go ahead and put in our left-handed drill and see if we can get this guy to back out of there now. Okay, here we go. Let's try to get this broken bolt out of here. We're running 210 RPM, left-handed drill bit. Tried to come out. All right, let me hold off just a minute. It backed out some and then it stopped coming up. It's just trying to cut it now. I got this 3.4 millimeter left-hand drill. We're gonna go in there 
and see if we can't get us a, a little bit of a pilot hole drill down into that uh, screw so that our 3 16 drill will have a better chance of actually catching that thing and, and backing it out of there. Uh, and then using this also, just in case it does try to catch it and back it out, it's a left-handed drill. Just wanting to drill it. All right, I'm gonna put the 3 16 uh, left hand back in there. All right, let's give it another shot. Almost got it. Man, so close. Got right there near the top and then stopped. Back with the 3.4 millimeter. Does not want to back it out anymore. It just wants to drill it. Sixteenths again. Man, I'm not getting any luck today with this. The threads were clean because I've run a tap in there, but it's not wanting to back it out anymore. It's just trying to drill it. There it is, we finally got it. That was a pretty long bolt all the way down in there. Man, I'm, I'm glad to see that. That worked out good. All right, so we went ahead and uh, cleaned up the threads there. I've got this uh, tap. I went down in there and I'll be honest with you, I'm not happy with the, uh, the threads. I did end up, the drill ended up getting into the, in this area towards the top. It started cutting into the threads. So we don't have the fit in this hole like we should. Here's the bolt right there. It's a little more loose than what I would like it. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna send this back with an inferior uh, tapped hole there. So we are gonna go ahead and install a Healy coil in this right there. I didn't have the right size on hand, so I just made an order with McMaster Car. I got two different length uh, six millimeter helicoils in there. Uh, got the tap and the installation tool, and we're going to go ahead and uh, helicoil that. It should be here tomorrow, so I'm going to leave this set up just where it's at. That way, we can come right back to zero and uh, drill it, tap it, install a helicoil, and then this part should be ready at that point. Okay, the UPS man showed up with my parts here. So we've got our uh, helicoils that I ordered from McMaster Car, and I believe what it was this was a 15 millimeter length. And this one was nine millimeter in length. I just wanted to have a couple since I didn't have any. So we're gonna be using the 15 millimeter length of uh, helicoil there. We've also got the proper tap from a uh, helicoil. So I do have a, I have the, uh, the plug and the bottoming tap, okay? And these are specific for helicoils, so they're oversized, all right? And I look up the tap size for that and it's actually gonna be I believe it was 2.248 uh, inches, so quarter inch. So what I'm gonna use is this uh, this extra long 
or extended length quarter inch end mill to bore the hole in that. That way we're in the center of it, making sure we're nice and uh, true and that it's not trying to walk off to one way or the other. And then we also have our install tool right here from Helicoil for uh, M6. And then there's the, there's the coil that we're gonna be putting in it right there. We'll use that to twist it right on down into the tapped hole. I think that's it, so let's go ahead and get started on it. We're gonna get this thing uh, bored out with that end mill. I've got my quill DRO set to zero. I wanna go down 35 millimeters. I wanna make sure that I have enough depth there that the entire tap will reach all the way down and, uh, and also clear the old threads at the bottom whenever the bolt goes in there. So if we go down uh, 30 millimeters, that, should, that bolt should be able to go all the way down in there, which I don't think it goes all the way to the shoulder, but we just wanna make sure that we clean up those threads there. I'm gonna put, let's put a couple drops of this uh, aluminum tap magic on here just to give a little lubrication down in the hole. You see there's not a whole lot being cut out there. And I gotta reset my depth because <laughs> I don't have enough depth on my quill there, so I gotta I gotta start over. I'm just gonna bring this up. It's come up an inch right there, and it's just an eyeball measurement here. So we'll use my icrometer to gauge where this end mill is even with the top of the casting there. All right, I'm gonna re-zero. Okay, let's go down. I think I was around 25, yeah, 26 millimeter. Looks like we're gonna have just enough room to get it. Yep, 34, there's 35 millimeters, all right. I do wanna put a chamfer on that. Make sure that we have a nice uh, bevel there for the tap to start in. That should work right there. Spring-loaded center made by a Fisher machine. We'll put that up in our half-inch uh, collet there, tighten that up, and I'm going to show you my tap wrench that we're going to use as well. This is one of the old goodies from uh, General, it's ratcheting. And you can lock it in the center as well so that it doesn't ratchet either way. General used to make some really good, nice tools. So <clears throat> we are going to use this guy here and we'll bring our Spring loaded center down into the center, at the end of the tap rinse, and that'll keep everything nice and straight. All right, put a little bit of our, I'm using some of the aluminum tap magic here. Center. Got to keep that spring center in there. All right, there we go. There we go, right there. Full depth of the tap. All right, we got our helicoil ready to go. I'm gonna put a drop of this uh, 336 lubricant on the, uh, on the helicoil here, just, to, just a little bit, just to kind of provide a little lubricant as it's going in there.
Almost. Actually, I want to take it down in there just a little bit. I want to try to get it another another thread down. See if we can get it about another thread. There we go. That'll work right there. All right, we got to get the. Uh, the tang that, that's on the bottom of it, I gotta knock that off and it'll be done, but that should be it right there. So we gotta knock the uh, tang off the end of the insert there. And, uh, they, they make a special tool <clears throat> that reaches down in there and actually twists it and breaks it off. And uh, that tool is upwards of about $100 for that thing. I always just use a punch and uh, stick that down in there and punch it and it's always worked fine. So I can tell that it's attached to like this side here. So I'm gonna make sure that my punch is towards that side and just tap it just like that. Breaks it right on off. Now what I'll do is, you know, when I take this thing out, I'll flip it upside down and work it and get that little piece to where it falls out of that hole there. But uh, other than just kind of cleaning it off, this job's ready to go. Just wanna get some of this, uh, some of the oil and the, uh, the chips off of it there. Gonna use this uh, degreaser here. There we go, guys. We've got a uh, completed clutch basket repair. I've got it all washed and blown out real good, so there shouldn't be any chips on this thing. And uh, we're ready to get this box back up and send it back up there to Jack McDonald there. Um, I hate that I damaged the threads getting the broken bolt out of there, but sometimes that kind of stuff just happens. But uh, thankfully, that's what helicoil kits are made for. You know, having, having these guys right here, this is a great way to, you know, keep this kind of stuff organized right there. Keep it all together, all the different size or linked coils and the taps and all that kind of stuff. Keep it all together. But uh, the helicoil kits work really good for repairs like that when you got a damaged thread. And I think this is going to be a uh, perfectly suitable repair. Uh, speaking of helical, I thought I would revisit this guy right here, this tool, and go ahead and show you the proper way to use this because I realized after I did it, I didn't show you guys the, the right way that Helical designed this thing to use. I, I usually use it just the way I showed you, but if you'll take and just unscrew this, you can see the, uh, the end of the, the threaded rod there. So it's screwing up inside this plastic housing. And what you can do is take it like this, then you have your <clears throat> coil tang side down, just stick it in there like that, and then go ahead and thread the tool through the coil. Once it reaches the bottom, you're gonna feel some resistance right there, but this piece here is threaded as well. So what you're gonna do is actually move that, thread that coil through there, and it puts some resistance on it. It's actually tighter than what I like it to be. But you can see right there, there's the end of the coil. And then, so you stick that down on your tapped hole and hold it you know, firmly over your tap hole and then you take and you screw it down in there. You'll hear it pop out there once it gets to the end because this is not under pressure. See how it unwind it? There it is. Okay, that's all the way through. So that is actually the way you're supposed to use this install tool. Thought I would show that because I know there's going to be a lot of comments saying that, hey, you didn't, what are you doing? You ain't showing her how to use that thing right. But uh, anyway, there you go. Our clutch basket is now uh, finished up and it is ready to go. So hopefully you enjoyed this project. I was glad I was able to help Jack get this uh, bolt out of there and then get the threads repaired so that his bolts will screw in there just like they're supposed to. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next job.